Okay, right, so next up I am going to be joined by Drew Wager. Um I am going to be um, exiting out, uh, going back into my actual um, game account for that, I think. Um, kind of getting towards that point where that would be a smart move to do that. Oh, come on. I also try and see if I can fix fix chat as well to make things easy for me. Oh no, look. That's why something weird happened. Oh no. Oh no. Never mind. There we go. So I'm gonna drag Drew up and say good evening. And we will um, get the next section, next portion of the challenge um, underway. Or at least that's going to be the plan. Uh, we'll see what on earth he has got planned for me. And like I say, I know it's going to be law based, but that's all I know. Hello, Drew. How you doing? Hello, Joe. Good to hear you. How are you doing? Um, I'm great, thank you. I'm doing I'm doing well considering oh it's been told off my posture um, by my chat again because I keep I keep leaning forwards and I shouldn't. Um, <laughs> so how, are you are you what eight hours eight and a half hours in now? Yeah, eight and a half hours. I'm sorry to keep you waiting because that's never. Oh, that's right. No, 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 these things these things don't worry about that. That's <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. It's like yeah, it kind of happens, but it's a bit of a. Oh. Just been seeing the total go up, so you know, congratulations on how much you're raising. That's what over twice the target already. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely smashing it, which is brilliant. Um, I can't it's fab, can't believe yeah. it's going so well. Uh, it it's one of those things where you you start doing something like this and it just happens, and yeah, it becomes yeah, it comes it's, together. comes its own, it's an animal. Um, although I have likened um, collecting everyone up for the stream, um, all the streamers, include, including yourself, is like, a bit like herding epileptic cats on meth. Well, it wasn't helped earlier because I switched on. I thought I'll just check everything's working uh, about an hour and a half ago, and then Discord wasn't working. I thought, oh no, this is all I need because I had a stream about a month ago where everything went wrong and Discord wasn't working, and so I thought, I can't believe this is happening now. Oh god! <laughs> but it seems it wasn't my PC this time, which is great. <laughs> so, no, but it looks like Discord had fixed whatever it was that was wrong. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. Which is good. Um, how? Oh. Trying to um, trying to get my chat fixed to make it easier for myself. Um, yeah, you might you might need the chat. I'm I'm kind of relying that um, folks may 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 need to help you out. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> so right. I understood you weren't you weren't weren't a major law person. I, I think you said something out. You just shoot stuff. So um... yeah, I mainly just shoot people. <laughs> so we'll have to see how so, that uh, goes. Um, yeah, you'll be all right. I, Hello I'm, there. It's um. It's one of those things. It'll either it'll either get stumped, and I'll just help you out with little prompts here and there, or okay. um, or you'll just you'll just breeze it, and it'll be too easy. But I don't know. We'll see how it goes, shall we? <laughs> yeah, we'll give it a go. Um, now right. I, I need to get out of this bleeding ship. But um, Yamex had me flying around in because uh, I I've got major problems with it now. That's it. It Oops. was awful. Um, but yeah, so uh, restream has apparently restream bot has apparently died but the stream's still coming oh, through which is good it's just the chat that has now died and it apparently it died after the competition finished which oh, okay. is kind of good luck um on that side of things <laughs> but still a bit of a pain so um do you want to tell people a little bit about yourself and who you are in case they don't know which they should yeah no um well um first things first thank you for having me on the stream very um very much appreciated and uh um, yeah, well done for, for putting all this together. I mean, it's, uh, it's a fantastic thing that you're doing. So, um, you know, huge kudos to you for that. Um, and hello to everybody on the stream. So, um, a few of you are probably aware of, of me. I've been, God, I've been playing Elite since 1984, um, the original version of the game when I was a kid. Um, been playing it ever since. Uh, got involved with Frontier at the Kickstarter stage back in 2012. Um, I think it was. <laughs> it seems quite a long time ago now. Um, and I ended up writing one of the um, official books for the, the game. And 
uh, as a result of that, uh, contributed to quite a lot of the lore and um, some of the missions and some of the uh, some of the characters that exist in the game, and quite a few of the uh, you know the tourist spots and various other bits and pieces that are in there. So had a lot of fun doing that, um, and uh, and yeah, so a kind of elite's been in my blood, I suppose, since I was a kid, and it's it's lovely to still be involved with it now as an old man. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good about computer games now is that they're, they're not they're not age dependent they're not just for kids anymore which is fantastic yeah i mean uh, yeah to a certain extent they kind of always were i suppose but um it's much more socially acceptable to play games now than it, it was when yeah as, as an adult shall i say as it when it was back in mm. the 80s um i think people looked at you a little bit sideways if you play computer games yeah um, and it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's much better now than it was which is cool which is cool now, uh, the challenge that you've got for me... Um, yes. What kind of outfitting am I going to need? Just because I'm... Um, I would reckon... You don't need too much. All you need is a ship with... You, you, well, as long as it can jump. Um, okay. And if you want to make a little bit of money along the way, then I would suggest having the kind of normal exploration scan. It's just the honk one. You don't need the detailed okay. stuff. Um, and also, um, make sure you've got the... Um, little device for talking to I can't remember what it's called <laughs> you know the thing you scan the um, data points with oh um, yeah so data link scanner data link so scanner. yeah we'll have that that should be good Just make, make sure you got those two now you should have uh, a friend request from a certain commander Alessia Verdi oh, I believe I have accepted Don't, that already if you've accepted it that's I cool. accept any friend request because I'm like that I'm that kind of guy yeah so just check you've got that, because if you have, then we should be good to go. Now, because I'm not actually flying in the game tonight. I'm going to be, I'm I'm sort of your law consultant for the evening. If that makes okay. sense. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be talking, I hope, to um, an NPC commander in the game that uh, is part of the law. Right. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoa, what's going on? Um, so let's just make sure that we've got everything that we need in all our fire groups set up. So discovery scanner, data link scanner, no weapons, don't need weapons. Uh, only in self-defense, of course. You won't be needing them from anything that I'm doing. Oh, well, but well, I don't know who else is out there, of course. So. Oh, no. Well, I'm in my private group, <laughs> so it should be okay. Should, should be okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the platter private group. I've asked them. Uh, oh, no, you didn't, you didn't just say platter, did you? It wasn't platter, was it? Or was it? I don't know. Just because, because it's, I, I always pull people up. Plater. Oh, sorry. Oh God. I, I, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I apologise. <laughs> I apologise because it's so often I get my name pronounced wrong. As well. Oh, so, it, it, it is Wagar, isn't it? That's a horrendous thing for me to have got wrong. It is, yeah. It's not like Wagar, like Swagger. Right. You know, it's that. No, no, it's not. My my sincere apologies for that. Oh dear, that's not a good way to start, is it? Um, right. So I now I'm just going to get. Unless you had to check. Uh, I'm assuming your commander name is Commander Plater? Is Plater, that yeah. That's me. I can't. Hmm. Uh, cause, so, uh... She's not showing you up there at the moment. Now. So we need that kind of first because she needs to be able to send you a message. Um, let's see if I can find. I definitely did. Um, I should have done. I should have accepted the friend request. Let's make sure we've not got. Oh no! Look, there's another one there. Okay, there we go. I have now accepted. You have got it. Yeah. Ah, excellent. Okay, so uh, let's see. There we are. Have you? Let me just. Ask whether she can get to you. Yep, that looks like that's working. So, okay, do, right. Should so, I send over a, a request? Yeah, so a, a wing. Say, just, just say hello. Um, you won't need a wing request. Okay. Not on this stage anyway. You might want that later on. Um, right, I will. Good to just double check we get into the same that sort of stuff later on. Okay. So I'm I'm ready. I'm poised. So hopefully I'll get a communication shortly. 
Uh, apologies for the unsolicited material. So yeah, you might, I don't know, read it out for the benefit of the channel, obviously. <laughs> My name is Alessia Verdi. I am not important. I doubt you've heard of me. Okay. I mean... No, I haven't. It's best that way. Ooh, mysterious. Okay, that's good. It's working. <laughs> See, someone said it's a trap. Oh. Uh, most you have are no longer with us. Well, that's threatening. So, um, yeah, I'll tell you a little about Alessia Verdi in a bit. Um, uh, so, my father was Luco Prestigio Giovanni. His motive clients is an organization of some renown. Okay. The darkness grows and the circle must continue to revolve. Hmm. This sounds like it could be the dark wheel. Oh, that's a good guess. Well done. Mm. Now, I know Alessia Verdi is uh, or a spokesperson for the Children of Raxta, which is an in-game player group. Mm. Um, so there's some interesting connections here that uh, maybe we'll learn a little bit about. See, now, I've, I kind of know who the Children of Raxta are. And I know that we don't know. You've watched me for a while and have asked to test my metal. Oh, no. <laughs> like, oh no! But just as just as well, you've got you've got me alongside. I'm sure I can help you a little yeah. bit more. A lot already people are like dark wheel and Raxler hints. <laughs> um, perhaps I will be found worthy. Maybe I don't. I don't know. I guess I have to wait and see. Quest away, I suppose I'd better respond to this one in game. I guess you want to. It's all. Uh, it's happening in game. It's happening yeah, in game. It's happening in game. <laughs> so uh, I'm just sitting here, dumb, like, oh, <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Right. Um. Okay. I accept. Mm. Good stuff. Okay. Right. So I will I'll watch and see what happens then. Somebody in chat, I swear if you get led to Raxler, I'm going to flip. <laughs> I think I'll be okay. <laughs> I, I'm not sure yeah. that'll happen, imagine that. Wouldn't that be cool, though? K-type star in heaven burns. Oh no. So you should have received the first clue by now. Um, yeah, I did. So we've got um, a story starts, a wheel turns, a K-type star in heaven burns. The first clue is easy, so don't be miffed. It's time to start the graveyard shift. So K-type star is obviously pretty straightforward. Yeah. So that's definitely... not going to narrow it down that much. No, it's not. Um, in Heaven Burns. Now, yeah. it depends on where you think 
heaven is. Because, hmm. Time to graveyard shift. Do you know anywhere in the game where there's a graveyard? Um, no, I don't. Do you not? No. Oh. Oh, I'll ask the chat. Mm, the chat may be helping you out. Someone said, um, "Isn't there a ship graveyard in Leesty?" Um, Tia Nisla. Someone suggested. Both of those are in the old worlds, which is definitely where the original Elite game started. So that's not a bad place to start looking. Okay. No, it wasn't a no. It wasn't a no. That's the wrong place, or yes, it's the right place. Let's no, start you're never with... going to get a yes. You're never going to get a yes or no. It's, okay, it's that's not fine. That kind of, not going okay. that kind of trip. Well, right. <laughs> Tianizza is kind of it's uh, pretty much my my player faction's backyard. So we're going to get we're going to start there. We're going to head on out. Cool. Um, I don't know how far away that is for you, but uh, that's um, definitely the first location, I guess. Two jumps. Two jumps. That's fine. Ah, brilliant! So you're in the locale. That's fantastic. That was uh, cause I started off in Shinrata because I figured it was a really good central location. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's not too far away from anything, which is cool. That's awesome. Okay, good. So, do you um have, did you play the original Elite game at um, all? Have you ever have you tried it? Um, I I downloaded it off the Frontier Store when um because I had it up there free and I oh gave the BBC that... version yeah yeah. Mm. Um, I I gave that a go. Um. And you know what? If if I had yeah. been playing computer games when it was like that, I don't think I would have carried on. It's pretty hard. It's pretty brutal, isn't it? it yeah. Just even the controls were a nightmare. <laughs> just even that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, it's it's. I mean, it's obviously a product of its time. It's quite interesting to to see how it's aged. I mean, you've got to bear in mind that I suppose. The, the games that were around at the time were literally just, um, you know, the Space Invader type clones and things like Pac-Man and stuff like that, where you had three lives, um, and you, you know, you had a high score that you had to beat, and your play time was probably, if you were rubbish, only a few seconds. Mm. <laughs> if you were half any, if you were decent, maybe ten minutes. Yeah? yeah. And that was that was all games were like that pretty much. And then, as people started getting home computers, which of course these early computers were, they didn't. They, they realised they didn't have to stick to the insert coin mentality. Yeah. Um, and so they started. You know, the people, developers, and people like David Rabin, obviously, started thinking, okay, well, if you don't have to insert a coin to start the game every ten minutes, maybe you can have a game that has progression in it that actually lasts days, weeks, months, you know, whatever. Um, what does that do to the gameplay? So rather than just shoot the ships which is what most of the games of that type were at the time why not have a well, you start off with a rubbish ship and maybe you can upgrade it by earning rather than earning a high score earn you know earn some cash and then use that cash to buy stuff for your ship yeah um and that's how elite sort of began to come together um you know why, where would you get cash from uh, oh maybe do some trading um maybe other people want to do trading so there's other people in the universe and then maybe they maybe they shoot each other maybe there's piracy and that's sort of the thought process that they went through to come up with the original leap um and then they you know they, they turned it into this game and it you know <laughs> odd enough when they when they first took a leap to a publisher the publisher the first publisher said to them no no take it away turn it into three lives <laughs> and um a 10 minute playthrough please otherwise we can't sell it and they went no no you're not getting the point <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, and um, you had to, uh, you know, and they had to find another publisher, a much smaller one, as it turned out, that kind of got what they were trying to do with this game. And it, you see the same thing nowadays a little bit with games: is that people will make a game that's like one that's already successful. Yeah, trying to make a new that. type of game is 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 really really quite hard because the publishers go, no, 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 we want one like the one that's just been successful because we want to make money. <laughs> mm. Well, I think Dark Souls is a great example of that because there's so many Souls-like, it's become its own genre almost. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then things like the original Doom and stuff in the 90s were kind of you know, the same sort of thing, wasn't it? First-person yeah. shooter type things and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so how are you doing with... I, I mean, I've got, the only problem I've got with this is I can't see... <laughs> um, now, I'm in, I'm in Tia Nisla. You're in Tia Nisla. Now, I'm in um, Tia Nisla. hopefully there is... Um, some kind of Taurus beacon there, I think. Um, so if you have looked down your contacts tab, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see um, something about the graveyard. I hope. Let's 
see. Hmm. Is there anything there? I've got a. I've got. Well, the interesting kind of points on here, I would say. We have a curious transmission, partially decoded. Okay. Um, yeah. We have. Going down. We've got a Sagan class traveller ship. Uh, civil Curious. energy technologies, uh, strategic quantum research, oh, and ZT Universe Co. Try the uh, try the Curious Transmission one. Okay. Um, actually, people have said that I uh, need to do a scan. There seems to be a, oh, yeah. a hint there that I need be... to scan something, or I'm not quite yeah, close scan, enough. If you scan the, if you scan, I think the, uh, uh, the beacon around the star, that may give you everything. There's quite a lot of stuff in Tinder, so actually, isn't there? Yeah, there is. There's Curious transmission <laughs> partially stuff. decoded sounds like it might be the one, though. So. Okay. Uh, I've seen quite a lot of love for the ZX Spectrum in the chat, so that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> I've been told to FSS the place, so... I will. Oh, that might help too. Yeah, give that a whirl. See if there's any um, PMIs that we haven't got automatically popping up. Because uh, we don't want to spend all of our time scanning things, do we? You shouldn't need to in all of them. This might just be. It might be. I'm, I'm slightly too far away. I told. We'll, try we'll the do, yeah. Do nav beacon. Yeah, try the nav beacon, and then if that doesn't work, let's go to the uh, curious. Transmission partially decoded. That's probably good enough, I think. So yeah, so I mean, Elite um, obviously came out of the BBC Micro. I I had it on the Spectrum because I couldn't afford a BBC Micro. <laughs> 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 back in the day, I mean, the BBC Micro back in 1983, I think, cost about 400 quid. Okay. Which big ticket? Which was item. a lot of money back then. Mm. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was like that's equivalent to about probably about 1500 quid today. So that would be a proper decent spec PC equivalent uh, today, um, whereas the Spectrum is about 120 quid, I think, um, so you know, about a third of the price, and um, that made a big difference to the yeah. number of people who bought them. <laughs> uh, you know, it wasn't cheap, cheap, but, you know, um, your parents could kind of think about that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, right. Scan so, um, yeah, so how, so let's see how you're doing on that one. Nav beacon is scanned. Okay, that's good. Now, let's see. Dragon 32, yes, I remember that as well. There we go. Uh, actually, Colin Pratt, well done. Uh, £129.95, the <laughs> Spectrum. <laughs> he remembers that exactly. I have no idea, but that's awesome. Um, now it's not bringing up anything new. Um, people okay, let's go. Let's go for that curious transmission. I think that okay. will be good enough to trigger what we need to know. So Tian Nisla is a really important location in the Elite Law. Um, so um, there's a bit of a tradition with Elite that it comes with a book, um, which is why so many of us were keen to write stories for Elite um, when it came in at the Kickstarter. Elite Dangerous, that is. Um, the original um, game came with a book called. Guess what? The Dark Wheel. And inside the Dark Wheel was a story that sort of set the scene for the game, told you roughly the sort of things that were going on. And inside that book are the first mentions of things like Raxler, things like the Dark Wheel organization themselves. And the game actually in the book kicked off in the Tianisla star system. So if you want to uh, you know, find out where all the lore sort of starts, Tianisla is a, is a real central place for, for all of that. Yeah. Um, and we'll visit one of the other significant locations, I'm sure, along the way. So, um, you're in a you're in a part of the galaxy called the Old Worlds, which is um, a set of star systems that were in the original game, okay. which are still uh, still in Elite Dangerous even now. Got it. It's interesting. So have you got the Have you got the Curious Transmission? I'm currently closing in on it. Closing in it. Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm watching now. I've managed to mute the uh, YouTube thing so I can kind of watch it, but it's like about yeah, a couple yeah, of minutes behind what's really going on. Yeah, it's, it's about 30 <laughs> seconds, I think. It's uh, Which, it's it's amazing. 30 seconds in real life. 
of being behind something is a nightmare. <laughs> It's pretty odd, isn't it? I'm watching yeah. it. You're kind of like, have we just done that? Oh, we have done that. That's what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. Um, so uh, so yeah. So um, the um, the original um, uh, game, you know, T and Nisla, the star system, is a really important place in the lore. Now there is supposed to be in game, and it hasn't hasn't materialised yet. When I bug Frontier about it about once a year, <laughs> <laughs> I send them a little guys. It's not there yet. Um, there's supposed to be a graveyard in Tianisla, and it used to be a place where the richest pilots in the galaxy uh, could pay to be buried in space. Uh -huh. um, and there were basically there's supposed to be lots and lots of derelict ships here, um, all kind of. Um, do not disturb, you know, it's, it's basically a graveyard of ships. And our heroes in this original story decide that um, they want a new Cobra Mark III, but they can't afford So they pinch one from the graveyard. <laughs> and of course, this um, you know, isn't, um, you know, really socially acceptable behavior. So it gets them into a bit of trouble to start with. So they kind of start off as sort of slightly fugitive. Uh, in the way that the original game plays out. But the idea is that the, the book was trying to tell you that there aren't any rules to how you play Elite. If you want to be yeah. bad, be bad. If you want to be good, be good. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of how it starts. Um, and um, that is, uh, um, you know, how, how the, the, the essence of the game kind of came together. You know, you, if you want to be good and just trade, then be good. If you want to be a pirate, that's cool as well. Um, and Elite was one of the first games that uh, gave you that permission, if mm. you like, to just just be who the hell you wanted to be, and live out your kind of pirate piratical fantasies. Now, I've arrived at the curious <laughs> transmission, and I might have Excellent. bumped into it as well. Um, I don't think you can destroy it. So no, it's, okay. it's, it's, more, it's more my own ship I'm worried about. <laughs> but yeah, right. What I'm, should be fun? Oh, it's an asp. You should be yeah, an asp explorer. Yeah. Just give yeah. the <laughs> okay, so what does have you managed to scan? Does it does it give you some? Um, yep. So it tells me. Um, it says uh, in early August thirty three oh two, an antique Cobra Mark three was in interred at Tinisla or orbital graveyard. Shortly before the ship was laid to rest, a beacon aboard the vessel transmitted a repeating sequence of curious characters. The sequence was picked up by several relay posts in the Tianisla system, and it's now been determined that it contains the content obscured with an unknown encryption. The encrypted data is followed by an apparently meaningless clear text phrase. The Vain Queen rides a giraffe that remembers her daughter's hero. There we go. Now that clue is not one that we need for this evening, but that's okay. another clue that folks can follow on different adventures if they ah. so wish. But uh, I, think, I think you're in good shape. So you've found the location of the graveyard, uh, at least where it should be once Frontier puts it in the game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> book, book. Mm. So, so with a bit of luck, um, Alessia will give you another clue at some point. So, um, at the end of the river lies a glow. Settled by voyagers long ago. A sister here drew her last breath. Um, a suspicious shuttle crash led to her death. <laughs> <laughs> Which is apparently uh, profanity in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that what happened? Did it, did it screen something out? Yeah, it did. Um, I'm assuming it's a suspicious. Um, suspicious shuttle crash. Yeah, and on my screen it's it's starred out. Um, Weird. Hmm. I'm kind of trying to see what what word is. And um, suspicious from the P. It's weird. Um, the P is. Mm. <laughs> well, the word is definitely suspicious. That's the correct thing. <laughs> so, um, any clues on that one? 
the end of the river lies a glow, settled by voyagers long ago. Sister here drew her last breath as a suspicious shuttle crash led to her death. And now... Now... Um, oh, some said, was that one of the Duvals? Now, that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Does anybody know the history of the Duvals? Do, do you know who the Duvals are, by the way? Um, they're, see, the ruling family of the Empire. They've got a real they kind are. of... They're, they're very much in there. Now, from what I understand, the Empire was formed when, like, the first group of humans went and left, like, home space, I guess, and they went off and they became, and they started doing their own thing, but there was a disagreement around the way they should conduct themselves. Yes, yes, so the, um, the, uh, uh, there was a lady called Marlene, Marlene, Marlene Duval, and, um, she wanted to found... Uh, a new civilization away from the Earth. She was fed up with the Federation itself. And she went off into space to find a new location. And um, rather shortly afterwards, uh, she was murdered, apparently. In a, it, well, it was a, it was a crash. <laughs> and okay. she died. And it looked a bit suspicious because her brother immediately took over and founded the Empire, which was entirely different to what she intended for her group of people to, to, to be... Uh, uh, ruled in that fashion. So, but the question is, where do we, where do we where do we need to go? So, the the, the bottom two clues are definitely to do with the empire. Um, the location is the end of the river. Now you've had a, there is definitely a clue in the previous um, comms log um, because there are two objects in that which any astronomers on the stream may may recognise. See now we've had a a, a, a suggestion because you know we've got yep. Akanar. Yep. Akanar. Akanar. Akanar, I think, is a good a good bet. Uh, Akanar is at is uh, if you look it up, it's a Arabic word. Arabic word for a star. Lots of the stars are Arabic, actually. Uh, Name conventions, and it means um, odd enough. Akanar means end of the river. Ah, so, there we go. I think that might be a sensible place to go next. Visit the heart of the Empire. Or at least get close to it, because I don't know if you'll have an uh, Imperial get permit. Oh, you I can, can get, get it. it. Yeah. P people cool. open doors for, the, for, uh, for Excellent. me. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's, uh, let's head off there, then. Um, I just want to quickly mention to everyone in chat, so currently you'll notice that the chat isn't coming through from YouTube onto the stream that you can see. I can still see the chat from YouTube and the chat from Twitch at the same time. It's a technical issue going on with Restream at their back end. Um, I can't fix it, unfortunately. Um, but I do see everything everyone's saying and any suggestions. Um, so don't don't worry, I will still respond. Don't give up and, on the suggestions. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I need the help. <laughs> yeah, so a few people have come up on the uh, on the, on the chat with that canal. So yes, that seems like a good bet. That seems like a good bet. So there we go, we're two, well, we're second clue in. I think we're in good shape for the second clue. And uh, we're running about mm, 40 minutes, so we'll see how okay. we go. We'll see yep. how we go. Let's see what I can do. Um, I understand that the person who's up next, which is Tato Chip, has a very laid back challenge. So we do have a little bit of flexibility. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, we should be all right. <laughs> um, and yeah, we are getting close to five thousand pounds on the donation goals. We're on four thousand eight hundred and twenty-five. Oh, so if we hit five thousand, that make Yamex happy. Uh, especially considering he's not feeling very well at the moment. Um, now I am also going to have to have a bite to eat in a minute. Um, that's right. <laughs> so because that's um, I'm not feeling too. Well, I'm getting hungry, aren't I? So, yeah. Make sure you have the right sustenance. Very important. Mrs. Plater, the old um, one to be like, you good? You doing some food? You want this? Um, now, down to astronomy, I think it's not OBS um, that's the issue on the chat object. It's actually the API that they're having problems with because it was working up until maybe about an hour ago. So um, I don't think it's that. But we can always t we can always tech troubleshoot when you're on down to astronomy because that might might help me out. You never know. So have you got a location for Akanar? How far away are you? Uh, we are uh, two jumps. It's not far at all. 
Ah, brilliant. So you've actually got a pretty good jump range on this machine, haven't you? Uh, yeah, it's kind of higher than I was expecting it to be, which means I've probably forgotten yeah. something important. But that's fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it should be okay. It'll okay. be fine. I can see on your uh, YouTube now, it's just... it's it, Why is it done... It's ICI. It's blanked um, out. That's someone weird. suggested, because it... Um, I don't know, yeah, ICI, I can't I, think What does that mean? Why... Is that in a different language, or...? Um, is he? EC? That means I mean, me, French doesn't it? That's for... French yeah. for... Yeah. Cool. Wow. Did that's I get that right? Mean, does it mean? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no way. So actually, um, I mean, what, what, what year are we in game now? It's 3,303... Uh, 3, uh, 5, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, the, the Empire goes way back to the 23rd century in Elite Dangerous. Um, the Federation of the Empire, a really, really ancient um, civ you know, in terms of civilization, has been around for more than a thousand years in the game, so they're pretty mature. Um, and they've existed way, way back in the, you know, sort of the Elite timeline. And, um, like you say, founded in a bit of skullduggery. <laughs> Um, back back then, um, when they had much much more primitive ships, you know they didn't really have hyperspace like we have it today, mm -hmm. and you know exploration and stuff took a lot much 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 longer. Um, now I must admit I um, um, had a lot of fun writing with the Empire stuff because um, um, David Braben told me they're sort of like um, the old Roman Republic, sort of yeah. cross referenced with the British Empire. So that's that. what this. That's what they're sort of like. Um, so they're kind of kind of a bit stiff upper lip and quite posh and <laughs> lots of togas is how <laughs> I imagine them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so they're quite interesting, interesting people. And they've kind of been in a sort of offstanding Cold War with the Federation for, uh, um, well, for about a thousand years. They don't they don't tend to have massive all out fights anymore, but yeah. um, they you know, they, they're always jousting for position and trying to persuade people that their way is better. Uh, so quite quite interesting sort of political tension in, in the game, really, which is quite good. Um, now, the interesting thing, they weren't in the original Elite at all. Um, the original Elite didn't have that political construct at all, didn't have the Federation, didn't have okay. the Empire referenced in it. You had a you had an organisation called GALCOP, yeah. which stood for the Galactic Cooperative. Um, and in the law of Elite Dangerous, that is now... Um, they were kind of moribund. They've gone. That 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 political organisation fell apart, and um, but it was it was kind of live and kicking in the days of the original game, and uh, Galcop was sort of supposed to be this kind of cooperative of different worlds, um, a kind of trading block really, uh, but all that's left of them today is the old worlds, which is the systems that you were in a moment ago with Tian Isla and so on and so forth. Um, so those worlds are. Uh, kind of a remnant from the original game and the original yeah. political structure that was there. Um, which is quite nice that Frontier have kept them in the game. You can still go and visit the places that were in the game way back in way back in 1985, which is, I think, is pretty cool. No, yeah, nice. definitely. No, I think it's always whenever you play a game that's like a remake of something or based on a movie, it's always cool to go and visit the place that was in the movie. It's yeah, a similar yeah, kind definitely. of thing. Um, speaking of which, I have arrived in Akanar. Excellent, excellent. So, so Akinar, uh will be full of places. I don't know if you'll need to go in because I think yeah, you know, that seems to be the birthplace of the Empire. I'm hoping that's good enough. So let's find out. Um, Origins of the Empire. We've got that in here. That you know, that's worth visiting. I would guess. It's a little... Maybe while we're waiting. Oh, congratulations once again. There we go. That's good. So you're making progress. That's good. Oh, now I do need to quickly mention... Uh, I, I need to do a shout-out for Mrs. Nemesis uh, and Commander Nemesis because it's their 24th wedding anniversary today. Congratulations. Wow. Well done. Yeah, congratulations, guys. That's pretty good. I'm, I've am just had my 24th, actually. My 25th is next year, so I... <laughs> I know what they're going through. <laughs> I, I had I had my fifth uh, fifth wedding anniversary oh, well. uh, this cool. this year. Um, in fact, this month, just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, congratulations on that as well. That's brilliant. Thank you. Now I'm going to turn my camera off so you guys don't have to sit there and watch me eat because it's weird. 
and it'd be super weird. <laughs> and I'm really sorry if you hear any eating noises. I am so sorry. I'm gonna. Oh, actually, I'm gonna wait for this to cool <laughs> down a little bit because it's yeah. so. Oh, I've got carbonara, so that's gonna no doubt end up in my beard. So <laughs> that's <that'll> be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I chose it. It's all on me. So. Is that is that um, spaghetti spaghetti carbonara? Or? Yeah. Something else carbonara. Yeah, spaghetti carbonara. That is. Nice. So we've nice. been um, well looked after by my wife. That's why she's managed to last five five, five years. <laughs> <laughs> spaghetti carbonara is, is good. Yeah. Because I look after you. Yeah, you're good. You're a good wife. Oh, crap. <laughs> I'm in trouble here, aren't I? <laughs> don't, oh, don't no. get in trouble. <clears throat> so, guys, let's. Uh, here we are, raising money for a charity. Ah, huh? well, that can't hear. It's pretty loud. Can't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, plate of food at ASMR. No, no. You guys know how I feel about ASMR. Not a fan. Uh, was his name from ages past? Okay. Uh, make your to this world fast. Hmm. Um, a starting point for the elite two. Notable for a piscine, so fish stew, that would be. I think there's a missing word somewhere in there. Okay. I think may, oh, it should be make your way to this, make your way to this world fast. Okay. Famous <laughs> for fish stew, eh? Hmm. But his clues might be getting a bit more tricky now. Yeah, almost. Uh, ramping up. <laughs> um, well, a wizard's name, I mean, what wizard's name's we got. I mean, talking about wizards from history as well. Um, yeah. So I mean, I'm like mm, you know, the most logical one you can come to think of is Merlin, because he, yeah. he's a great wizard. But I that doesn't. I've never seen anything called Merlin in Elite Dangerous. Right. Um, so, or maybe, mm, maybe it. Is it? <laughs> Someone said Harry Potter. No, no it's not Harry Potter. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I suppose he is a great wizard, but uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, a Gandalf. It's going to no, be. It's going to be. It's going to be a system. It's definitely got to be a system. Um, I've seen. I've seen a clue come up in the chat, which is, I think, the correct one. Uh, Merlin is the planet you started on for Frontier. That's. Uh, what someone said there. What else have we got? Okay. Because we've sort of, we've sort of had the original game. Um, LHS three four four seven, which is where you where we all used to start in Elite Dangerous. So that's in Elite Dangerous, yeah. Hmm. One of the Rosses. Pretty sure you started on the front here. Pretty sure I've seen a Gandalf okay. system. <laughs> is there a Gandalf system? I don't think there is. Right, let's, let's get into the old galaxy map. Is oh, there man. is there a system called Merlin? Yeah. Or, oh, come on. Have you got EDDB or anything like that? Um, I mean, there, oh, there is a system called Merlin. No, Ross one five four. Hello. It's one five four. Cross okay. 154, and then there's a planet called Merlin, which is an Earth like. Sounds like quite a good bit. It does, now, doesn't it? Um, there's another clue. What about, um, what about line three? Line three. The starting point for the Elite Two. Okay. Now, Frontier, the game, was called Elite Two. Because it was the sequel to the original game. Ah, okay. So that might be a that might be a little clever play on words. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, everyone's every, everyone's only clicks at the same time. So they're like, ah, oh. 
<laughs> of course. So I think, um, yes, I'm pretty sure I, I recall that um, on the, the starting point for the second game um, was was Ross 154. Um, Does that, that still exist in the Lake Dangerous? Is the question. Ross 154. You, you said you found it. Um, oh, yep. Yeah. It's in the old galaxy map. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Ross 154. There we go. There we go. So we're off. We are off. So Merlin. Merlin's where we need to go to. Oh, I thought Merlin. It can't be that. I've never heard of anything <laughs> Merlin. Moron. <laughs> I just have a quick search and I'll be like, yeah. It's fine. All right. I'm switching my camera off, everyone. So I am still here. And you'll hear me talking and stuff. I'm just going to be... I'm going to eat my food. <laughs> You're just eating Dagladella. Yeah. Don't mind me. Sounds good to me. Elite 2 equals 2. Yes. It's definitely... Yeah, it's popped up in the chat. I think that's a good, I think that's a good one. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So um, the original uh, in law, the I mean, obviously, Elite Dangerous is now set in thirty three, um, thirty three hundred, um, and um, the original game was set uh, in the year thirty one twenty five, one hundred and seventy five years ago, based okay. on Elite Timeland. Um, that's when the original game was set. The second game, so which was called Frontier Elite 2, uh, was set in the year 3200, so 100 years before where we are now. And um, that's that's how it fits into the law. So like 75 years had passed um, between the two, you know, the first two games in the in the history. So uh, that kind of puts that in for you. Um, oh, yeah, because I always find it surprising that the ships are. That you're flying around haven't changed for like a hundred years, and that's a really odd thing to think about, because you kind of assume that technology would go super fast. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because we, I mean, we we tend to assume, I think, that the you know the technology change that we have today, which is obviously really really fast paced, is um, um, is normal, right? And mm. we've kind of lived through change, 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 change um, for most of our lives, but. Um, you know, for a lot of humanity's existence, technology was static virtually for you know for decades on end or centuries sometimes, and then you have these kind of bursts of of, of change. Uh, we're certainly living through one at the moment. Um, if you look at the Elite Dangerous timeline, there's there's huge gaps where there's no obvious technological technological improvement at all. It's quite weird. I think the assumption there is that someday, sometimes it's um, you know things just stick and you get the technology is good enough to, to last for a while and then boom. Off you go, yeah. Because um, uh, it's 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 a bit weird actually. They introduced in the law um, hyperspace was discovered um, way way back. I think in the twenty third or twenty fourth century, but it wasn't commercialised properly for you know average pilots like us flying around in elite dangerous ships for almost seven hundred years. Um, you kind of think, well, how, <laughs> why did it take them so long? Um, um, and it, it's but, you know that's. That's one of the things that you had in the in the game. It's a relatively recent commercial proposition for your average pilot. Uh, and before that, it was the preserve of massive, massive uh, organisations who could afford it. Okay, I've just arrived at Merlin. You've arrived at Merlin. Nice. Well, well done. Okay. So I don't know if there's anything else in that system, because you actually uh, the original thing is slightly annoying thing about Elite Dangerous could do in the second game. Um, obviously, is you could land on atmospheric planets. We can't <laughs> can't do that yet. God, it's weird, isn't it? I suppose <laughs> the difference being um, detail that we'd expect now yeah, versus then. Yeah, yeah, I mean, then it was just like a few triangles. <laughs> but um, yeah, so but I'm, hopefully they'll do it one day. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Right. So hopefully that will trigger you a new clue soon. Mm hmm. 
So, saying, you're doing well, Commander. Um, here of old did great Commander's Tower. At Galcop's ancient seat of power. Here in the old world, the law lies deep. Oh well, we're off to lave. Um, disturbed what by an orange sidewinder's constant beep. Ah, well, that's an easy one. Yeah, excellent. That, that one helps me. <laughs> that way, I know exactly where we're off to. Um, <laughs> that's not that's not an issue. So yeah, so lave is is well, it's the starting point of um, elite. Really, is the planet lave, um, and. Um, that was where you, as a pilot, started the game in the original Elite. So when you first loaded it up off your cassette, <laughs> or your floppy disk, um, when you press launch, you came out of the space station at Lave. That was that was the planet uh, or the system that you were in. So that's that's kind of key for, for Elite Dangerous, I guess, in that sort of sense. It's kind of where, the, um, where everything starts from a pilot's perspective, really. Yeah. That's where you, uh, according to the law, you got your um, you got your uh, pilot license from Lave, um, and I, I don't know. I haven't. I haven't. I admit, I haven't looked at the um, the new um, sort of training stuff for the new players. I haven't, I haven't um, um, checked that. But I don't know. Does it? Does it now? Does it take you through starter systems? Is Lave still part of that? It is, but it it certainly was in. Um, no, in it's not. In the uh, original games. Yeah, I think you have that, there's a whole are... bunch of special safe systems, aren't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah that they're all kind of designed for um, to give you a, a good experience as you go through. That's kind of the idea. Um, is that it guides you slowly as you as you move out. Yeah, and you just you just pick up more and more and more stuff. So, um, but in the old game, you just chucked in. <laughs> there's Lay, fly out and hit the best. Uh, which was all that. It's an odd choice, actually, because it was actually, back in the original game, a relatively dangerous system. Um, it wasn't, you know, a full-scale anarchy, but it wasn't exactly uh, um, the, uh, you know, the friendliest of places to, yeah. to go to. So uh, it's, it's uh, <laughs> it was a slightly curious choice for it. But there we go, never mind. Um, so uh, yeah, so a uh, 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 lave radio. Um, those those guys are kind of based out of that law, right? But I think they're a faction. Um, yeah, yeah, they are. And we've we've got the um, which is which is cool. Uh, and they've got to uh, um, uh, they've got an orange sidewinder actually in the game. <laughs> Quite nice. Yeah, that touch. was um, uh, the the orange sidewinder has been a a source of um, I guess. Uh, contention at points because it's a um, it's a solid it's an NPC that can be destroyed, and there yep. have been lots of um, uh, people who, when they decided to to wage war against Slave Radio, the faction, right. they literally just sat there and blew the crap out of the Orange Sidewinder over and over again. <laughs> I presume it respawns. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, it just will yeah. relog and there it goes. <laughs> it's back again. Yeah. Right. I'm in Lave. So awesome. Well, that was nice and easy. So that should yeah. be a straightforward one. So um, hopefully Alessia is watching. Uh, uh, the side was replaced in Chapter 4 with a full installation of his head. Excellent, but that was easy. Yeah, I mean, if I got it without any help. <laughs> <laughs> A notorious pirate, one sunk so low. A tourist spot number zero five zero zero. Uh oh. 
Not much left now. She was not nice. Known by her call sign, call sign, the vice. Hmm. Well, that's gonna be a slightly tougher one. Yeah, that's that is a slightly <laughs> tougher one. Um, I think we're gonna I'll drop in on the orange sidewinder for. Yeah, drop in on the orange sidewinder. Yeah. And we'll, we'll hey, maybe I'll of... give the chat a chance to, for people to go. What's that one mean? Yeah. Now, this is this is more recent history. This is. Um, somebody might be able to look up the tourist spot number. I'm guessing. Now he. Hmm. Who was known? Well, of course, the question of who was known as the Vice. <laughs> now, hmm. Someone said, was it Miami? No, it wasn't Miami Vice. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense Miami at all. Is there a Miami um, system here? <laughs> um, Vice. So, Notorious Pirate. Okay, so that's going to be... Somebody pretty bad, obviously. Um, um, now, the Vice is a nickname. It's definitely from the Elite, the elite Law. Um, oh, I've just seen it. I have seen it in the chat, actually. I think. I think I'm Octavia Quinton. Ah. Oh. Octavia Quinton. Now, Octavia Quinton was a um, well, sort of pirate lord, a kind of mafia type figure in one of my books, and she's dead. Um, so that would make sense that there's not much left now because she was killed. Um, and she was called. I think I, I'm just trying to remember my book now. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't. I should have had a copy down here. I've got it. One, I haven't got it on the shelf at the moment. Um, I'm pretty sure she was called the Vice, actually. So that might be that, but that doesn't tell us where to go. Um, but tourist spot. That must be um, the clue. So zero, zero five zero zero. Oh, oh. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be naughty and do a quick Google search. Yeah, because that's, that's kind of what I've done. Uh, I've, decided, <laughs> I've, I've delved into it. Yep. Um, Su Sujin. Sujin? Su Sujin. Okay. I think that's that looks like it's the, the place to go for the tourist. Right, weekend. okay. Let's try that. So, yeah, so um, Octavia Quinton was was an evil character, evil baddie character, really. Sujin won. Okay, that looks like where we've got to go. Okay. Um, she had a cybernetic hand, and she used to kill people by crushing them. Yes! That's badass. <laughs> <laughs> That's so that was quite... it should be. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so um, that um, is, uh, is, is good. Um, and I, I must admit, I didn't know. I didn't know it was in the game. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I've learned something this evening. I didn't know. Um, I didn't know there was a tourist spot for her. That's yeah, interesting. there's there's a, a um, tourist beacon. There's Did a it... tourist beacon for presumably for the location of issue. I don't even. That's just, this is a bit strange actually because I don't think I. I wonder if Frontiers pulled a little joke on me. <laughs> 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 they may have done. This is quite cool. Um, because I don't think in the book I ever determined the location. It was supposed to be top secret. It's one of those sort of places where if you haven't been there, you can't find it kind of place. Hmm. Uh, that's how I'd written it. And I'm pretty sure, I don't remember specifying a system. Sujin does not sound like anything I wrote, I don't think. Um, so I'm, I'm quite intrigued to see what you find next. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Well, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, we're off, <laughs> What's we're going. There? Oh, so how far away is it? Is it, is it not too uh, far? I don't know, it's, it's a couple of jumps. Okay, so it's pretty, pretty, that's quite good. 
Yeah. Everyone, everyone, <laughs> I've just seen Ray. Everyone died in your book. Well, most people die. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think I think at the end of the second book, lots and lots of people were dead. But um, that's kind of the way the elite universe rolls, isn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, Alessia Verdi here, though the lady we're talking, her character was in uh, in the second book, and has, well, obviously she's still alive. She's talking to us, isn't she? But yeah. um, so uh, so she obviously made it out. <laughs> Apparently, Steam is down at the moment. People are saying, which oh, no, oh my god, it's so it's not Discord, good... Steam, Restream. Um, I picked a day for it tonight. <laughs> you did, didn't you? <laughs> Everything's busted. <laughs> oh dear. And can you not fire the game up then if Steam is if you bought it through Steam, can you not fire it up? That's a a real um single point of failure well, problem. You can it? have it installed separately. Right. Um because I've had it before I've had the game installed twice. But Yeah, I've got um I mean I've I've had the leak and it's not I mean I use Steam because I've got quite a few games on Steam, but um that's annoying. Yeah, it's really bad for people. I thought someone said um, your characters don't die; they just go to Raxler. <laughs> <laughs> well, Raxler, now that is, um, and I, I, you know, I'll, I'll say again, you know, live on air. I, I don't know. I do not know where Raxler is. It, it was uh, one of those off-limits things. We were given a, a, a law, a sort of law by regional books, and I was given a sort of updated one when uh, when I wrote the second book back in 2017. And um, Raxler has always been off limits to anybody outside of Frontier. Um, uh, I, d I don't. I don't. Even, I don't even know who does officially know. <laughs> Certainly, I don't. <laughs> so, whatever Raxler is, wherever it is, however it's been implemented, if it's been implemented, all those sort of things. Um, I, d I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm as vague as everybody else on that. It was. It was absolutely off limits. Even wow. more top secret than Thargoids. Well, um, back in the so it's um it's a proper you know no nope, can't talk about Rexler. Um, oh, I, I guess I'm gonna I, I can't ask you that question <laughs> then of can you tell us where Rexler is then? Because well, I, I I've 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 got a YouTube video up somewhere online um, where I've kind of um, speculated on it myself and um, all the clues are out. I mean, you have to watch the video. It's about 40 minutes long, I think. Goes through it's far too much detail to go in here, but um, it, that that's online with everything that I've thought about it. And I don't. My my gut instinct on it is it isn't too far away from the core worlds because there's an interesting little mention in the elite law of when Raxler was first talked about, and I think it's in the codex actually. If you look up the codex um, entry on Raxler, it tells you when when Raxler was f first started being discussed. It gives you a date, and um, it's so long ago that we didn't have really decent hyperspace drives at that point. So if Raxler was, you know, was talked about that long ago, hmm. then it can't be all that far away from home, right? Because we couldn't get that far away from home. Yeah. So, yeah, and yeah, but what is Raxler? Obviously, we don't know. If it's a if it's a place, a physical place like a planet or a system, um, it has to be not that far away from from the core world, I think, is, is my guess. Um, but what it actually is, um, who knows? <laughs> oh, we, we've been, it's, it's a really tough one. Yep. We've been allegedly told that a commander has been into the system with it and then left. Yes. I've never found the original source. And I'd like to just kind of go back to the beginning of all these sort of threads. And I've never found the original um, statement about that particular rumour. I've, I've, I've seen loads of people saying they've heard that rumour and then obviously repeating it, but I've never found the original source of that story. Um, and unfortunately, the forums have now been revamped, so mm. <laughs> um, I don't think we're ever going to find it. So I, I, I can't, that one, I can't substantiate. I have tried, but I've never found the original source of it. So... So there we go. So I would. I mean, a uh, question is popped up on my chat. Do I there? Well, told face to face by David Braben that it was, and that was at the BAFTA event oh. uh, three or four years ago now, when he gave a presentation about the leap to the BAFTA art audience, and I just happened to be in the vicinity and managed to bag myself a ticket and went along, and actually said hello to David Braben and. After the talk in the in the sort of auditorium area, I just said, you know, so um, you know, what about Raxler? Is it there? Because it was, you know, that was the, the law question, obviously. 
Um, and he said to me, face to face, he said, um, uh, it's in the game and we Frontier, we, we as in Frontier, know where it is. You guys don't. Mm. <laughs> but you guys don't, obviously. <laughs> so whether, it, whether it's codified in the game as a thing that you can do today, I have no idea. I, I don't know. Um, I think the danger of putting too much of it in the actual game too early is somebody will um, find it by kind of code diving or something. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what they've tried to avoid at the moment. So I think they probably, what I get, what I'm guessing is they probably decided if it is a location, I reckon they've probably decided where that is, and they've kind of earmarked it because there's there's systems in the game like Polaris, for example, which require unknown permits. Right. You yeah. can't get to them at the moment for whatever reason. Um, and um you know maybe something like that will unlock at some point in the future and they'll go oh hang on me look there's a way of getting that permit and maybe that leads you on something so i suspect it won't be kind of followable too much until maybe the next big update the 2021 or maybe they'll add it in sometime after that mm. or i don't know you know maybe all those sort of things are things that they'll do it's difficult to say well i've arrived at the um at the tourist beacon. okay so and I'm also going to turn my camera back on. Way I'm reappeared now, because <laughs> I took off my ring of power, and now here I am. <laughs> That's a so, quite a cool effect. Thing, it? Um, it says a ruined base left over from the events of 3300. The base was rumored to be the stronghold of notorious pirate lord Octavia Quinton, who was killed in mid 3300 when she became involved in the reclamation of the prism system. Today it is a ruin and visitors are warned not to venture within. Rumours abound that it is heavily booby trapped. Okay. And it's not actually here. <laughs> like, there's, <laughs> so nothing there's nothing actually here. There's a, there's a, there's a tourist, but that's a bit of an anti climax. It's quite a cool description. Because <laughs> they've got they've got um asteroid bases now. Maybe they should uh, maybe they should put some stuff in. Hmm. Uh, interesting. Yeah, oh, put... Well, that's something I hadn't re even realised they'd they'd done that. Um, um, that's quite interesting. Um, I'm going to have to go and visit that myself. Actually, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting one because um, it, it could be a really cool place to have an asteroid base sat here looking out. Yeah, the, sort of, uh... a sort of a sort of derelict one, just sort of sitting there. Yeah. Maybe if you try and go inside, it blows you up or something. So, wow, there we go. Okay, so is that good enough for? Is that good enough for Alessia? Let's find out. Uh, is there an asking if there's anything in the rings? I don't think there is. Is there anything in the rings? Well, you know, death. whilst we <laughs> whilst we're here, yeah, there's no harm in. Popping off a little scan. No, definitely So next up, we've got a world of clones, or so they say, perhaps we'll end up the same someday. Uh, dear Alicia came from here. Oh, no, what are we doing? Oh, there we go. We got another clue. Um, and Rebecca's last words are also near. So, a world of clones, or so they say, perhaps we'll end up the same someday. Dear Alicia came from here, and Rebecca's last words are also near. Okay, so Rebecca is a character from my books. Okay. Alicia is a character from the original Dark Wheel novella, um, which you can find printed online. Um, I can't remember where she came from, but it'll be online. If you look up oh, the Dark yeah. Wheel, uh, I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> you're on it. Look I'm up the Dark it. Wheel. Teorge. It's Ian Bell's. Now, actually, interesting enough, the Elite Homepage. org is probably what you'll end up on. That's actually Elite uh, Ian Bell's 
um, website, <laughs> who was the co-author of the original Elite alongside David Braben. And, and those two had a bit of a public falling out over Elite. <laughs> ah, yes. I, so, I, I, have, um, I have seen the after effects of yeah, that. Yeah, so they don't, they don't talk. They won't be in the same room mm. uh, anymore. And um, so, um, but the Dark Wheel is actually by a chap by the name of a really quite a good author. He um, sadly died. He had an E. coli infection, I think, back in 20, 2009 or something. Quite oh. sad. He was taken away early, which was very sad. Um, and um, very unexpected as well, unfortunately. And, um, but he, he wrote some really quite wonderful books. Um, and they're kind of, I suppose, the sort of natural magic is mostly what he did. It was mostly fantasy. But he mm. was commissioned apparently to write the wheel for for Elite, and he did rather well out. <laughs> it helped set him up for a writing career, which is you know a good thing. Yeah. Um, and he wrote this story for Elite. He actually wrote the original manual, for Elite as well, um, which which is why there's quite a few things in the manual that weren't actually in the game. <laughs> <laughs> so he was he had a little bit of in the manual and in the story. But I know for sure that Alessia is a character in here. So let's see if we can now find I've out. Had a little look. It looks like it's, it's Tiorge. Tiorge? Torge. Ah, there we go. Tiorge. Tiorge, Torge. Like Torge, like uh, Tiorge. Yep. That meant that Alessia Fields was from Tiorge. Yep. The so called Clone World. That'll be it. There you go. Yeah. That I ended up on the uh, wiki.alioth.net. That's where I ended up to get the answer. Ah, brilliant. Oh, yes, that's the old wiki. That's the pre Elite Dangerous wiki. So um, that one is one that was set up yonks and yonks ago. In internet um, um, in internet prehistory, that is. <laughs> Back in the early 2000s. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that is um, that's, that's probably old wiki. But it's probably still accurate for the original game. Tiorge seems to be seems to be that clone world. That's cool. Mm. Um, yeah, so a few other people have got Tiorge as well. Now, interesting enough, Tiorge was where um, um, some of the uh, end plots to the Salome um, uh, event happened as well. There were some logs there that I think explained something. Um, Trying to remember what they were, so they 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 will be about. We can go and have a look at those. Um, Check it out. Because the, the the Salome event was unfortunately taking place whilst I was at work, and right. um, I was oh, you know at this point who cares? I was watching it on YouTube. Like I was bouncing yeah. across between channel to channel, watching it, being like, <laughs> Damn, I on. should have been at home doing this. I should have because at the time <laughs> it was like my my channel was growing quickly, but it's still quite small. And I was like, oh, I could have been yep. on this. I could have just been sitting around doing nothing, waiting. Because <laughs> there were a lot of people <laughs> just sitting there who saw yeah. nothing. That was it. That was it. Yeah, it was. Um, it was a really difficult thing. And we when we first set it up. Um, I thought it would be a, a small, quite fun piece of, um, uh, you know, adventure for those people, who, you know, a little bit of, a bit of story, um, and um, I had no idea originally, going to turn into this this sort of like fundamental turning point in the game <laughs> that it, it ended up becoming, <laughs> and um, it was it was a fascinating thing because I, I I really wanted I'd been writing this book for. Um, um, for Frontier, and I, I sort of said to them, you know, I, you know, the players have been writing the story all the way through. I want the players to end the end the story. You know, the story's got to have an ending, right? It's got to, you know, even though the game carries on, the story itself has got to have an ending. I can't yeah. just keep writing forever. The book, book's got the book's got to have a final chapter, right? Um, and I said, well, you know, I want, to, you know, it's got to be a bigish finish. You know, you, it's like it's like Star Wars, right? You have a run on Star or something like that, um, and um, it was um, it, it needed something like that, so I kind of came. But what what can we do in the game that's actually possible to implement? And there were lots of limitations because Frontier, you know, only had a certain amount of dev time, so we couldn't put massive assets in the game and, and all that kind of stuff. And um, we started thinking about should we do it in a private group? And then then we had all the problems of how do we police a private group? Mm. 
because we'd seen Mobius be infiltrated and we knew that was a that was a pain. And then we thought, well, we could do it in open. And everyone went, no, 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 you can't do it in open. For God's sake, don't do it in open. Because <laughs> you'll be instantly slaughtered in open. Um, because everybody up to that point had been instantly slaughtered in open, right? Um, and um, so we were trying to design a, some, a scenario that worked. And we came up with this thing whereby we could just, it was basically a, a trench run, like in, like in Star Wars. Um, the simplest thing, get from point A to point B. And if you get to point B alive, then you kind of won up. You haven't. Um, and even that was incredibly complicated. Um, yeah. And the long and the short of it is that, that you know, we, we organized that. But then everybody else, all the factions around, all the player groups in the game, some, um, some people were trying to kill her, some people were trying to defend her, and then there were lots of people just arguing in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> and it got in, insanely complicated. Um, and for some people, unfortunately, they didn't see see the activity you know, where they were and you know, some of that was the game itself you know, the instancing stuff and some of it was um, the, the way that the game was organized and yeah you know, we did things wrong to be fair you know it was it was um, it was a lot of, of work we didn't anticipate everything that happened and um, but at the end result we I mean everybody knows what happened right <laughs> yeah spoiler <laughs> alert Harry time Potter's here we on, go he's been on yeah, he's been on the stream earlier anyway, so you know, yeah, he 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 did he did kill Salome in the law. That's what happened. So um, you can't argue with that bit. Now you but couldn't the, call him um, Harry Potter, could you? No, I couldn't. No, no we. Yeah. Um, I mean, that would have been a bit of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to honour the you know it happened so it happened approach, which is mm. what I'd promised to do in the book. But um, you know, I had to. I did have a. I did have a quick chat with him afterwards and just said, look, I need to use a name that is. You, know, you, but I can't use the name Harry Potter um, for obvious reasons. Um, and so we came up with Besieger, which I think was his forum handle, or still is his forum handle, and uh, used that instead. Um, but um, you know, for all the stuff that went wrong with it, and, and everybody's got a view on that event, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, and I think that's, you know, it's kind of a bit of history now, really. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but even we I did. We did. did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we did stay alive for an hour and 45 minutes in open um, under constant PvP attack from you know, pretty experienced um, players. Um, and oddly enough, one, one, uh, one NPC that just would not let us go, <laughs> <laughs> which, was, which was quite weird. Because um, we just got away from the PvPers and then an actual NPC decided to get involved and take us down the well. <laughs> but that was, that was just slightly ironic. But um, yeah, we, 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 we almost made it. We were, I think, about seven jumps out from where we needed to get to. And then, then Harry Potter got lucky, partly because he was prepared for it and partly because we had instancing problems with our wing at that point. Mm. And the game and the thing that the game does conspired against us. So, uh, But my rule for the book was very much, if it happens in the game, it's happened in the law. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's how I wrote it. For, for yeah. good or for evil, basically. <laughs> Oh, just a bit told, about, told off about my posture again. Oh dear. Oh, make sure you stay uh, straight. It's, 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 to be honest, um, this isn't the. But this is not a twenty-four hour chair. This is probably a. It's probably like a five-hour chair. Like chairs are rated in number of hours. You're supposed to just sit in them comfortably. Um, oh okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everyone's just realised that restream bots kicked back in. I did that. I made that work. Yay! Well, no, I clicked refresh and a couple of stuff. It's fine. Oh. So I'm. I am in George. Excellent. Well done. Where so to? Is there... Well, I wonder if we we'll get a clue. What, I wonder if. What, what have we is. got? Um, what have we got on the? Uh, we have a context. listening post here. We have um, another listening post. Another listening post. Um, quite a few of them. Yeah. I think those are Rebecca's last words. I don't. We probably don't have time to go and listen to them all now. That will take too long. But um, if anybody wants to come back, and listen to. Them. Um, they are part of the um, the Formidine Rift set of clues and, and that adventure that uh, people can go off and do that haven't, uh, they haven't done that already. So there's another little look that people can get involved in if they if they so wish. <laughs> so, it, that uh, is, so that is quite nice, that, that lore. Because, I mean, hopefully we're giving some hints to everyone that what they can go and do in-game, like if there's little yeah, bits of lore to yeah. flesh and out. Yeah, and the idea is that there's these things around it, um, and... If you want to, you can chase down and try and investigate. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so Tior, that's good, and that's the home world again. Another important place for the original Elite Law as well, which is where uh, Alessia. I can't remember her surname. Did it say in the in the 
Oh, we all this year. Oh, yeah, it did. Yeah. It did, but I can't remember because I just closed all those windows down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, don't think we need it. Blast. Um, Oh, proved, proved yourself. You're on par. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Now the dark will watches you from afar. Oh, creepy. Yeah. They're a spooky bunch of people. Oh, here we go. Soon, <laughs> soon it is your ta- oh. No, we've been censored. Um, oh, not again. Yeah. Task something till. A certain relic fits the bill. I'm going to assume it's soon till relics because of the rhyming, and it's the only relics that I know of. I don't think there are any other relics in the game, and if it's got no. soon thing, that makes it sense, doesn't it? Yeah, so well, I think you're probably on the money that one. Yeah. So I'm going to go now. Do I go to the system? Do I go to Soon Till? Or do I go to the place where you buy Soon Till relics? <laughs> that is the question. Cause... It's sort of implying there that maybe you need a relic. Okay? Oh. Because we don't. Um, a certain relic fits the bill. Okay, so if I need the relic, then I have to go and perch it. Well, go to where you would buy, you'd buy them. And suitable relics um, you get from Naguri. It's to be desperately hoping for a. Yeah, it sounds sensible. Like <laughs> just just a little, a little something. To I tell think. Me how yeah, I think it looks like a suitable relic is what you. Yeah, I'd be guessing. I don't know if somebody yeah. needs a soon till relic. Oh, oh dear. Because that's um, because oh, how Nagari far is, is that? Is really, that I mean, that's it's not too far. It's it's. Thankfully, I'm in something where very few things in the bubble are more than four jumps away. Yeah, you've got a decent ship, which is which is sensible. <laughs> um. Um, oh, it, also there are guardian relics as well. So there was that as a uh, someone mentioned, but even still, I mean, we wouldn't be. None of us would be going think, out there. That's for sure. No, no, you're not going to get that far. Dream. <laughs> uh, time space explorer. We are currently in the tenth hour of the stream. God. Yeah, tenth hour. Yeah. Is it? Wow, you're doing well then. Yeah, yeah. coming up on ten o'clock. Jeez, that's um, <laughs> um, and we're pretty close to the five thousand pound mark. So you know, nice. dig deep, guys. Donate. It is an age of charity, providing twenty four hours of, of hopefully entertainment. Hope so. Yeah, hopefully um, people have been um, enjoying our little lorry exploration so far. I'm learning loads. Because I've never been up on them. Like I said, <laughs> I you, I, I'm the guy that shoots ships. I don't know. Because I mean, like, um, sometimes it's nice just to have a bit of context for the way the game works, right? Yeah. It's um, why some things are the way they are, and all that kind of cool stuff. Because we have um, in in my player faction, we have we have some law, and yep. Um, because I have I have a station that's that's named after me. Uh, and I've done the, I oh, did the voice work for oh, yeah. Wow. It's called Plater's Tyranny. Oh, brilliant! It's uh, a, a, yeah, and that you think um, Zach Antonacci for coming up with that name. Um, brilliant! Yeah, it, awesome. him, him and a school being sitting there looking at stuff. It was like, what about this? <laughs> um, and it was like, oh my god, that's brilliant! The best idea ever. We have some lore, like awesome, the, um, yeah. the the idea of the the ploid, which is uh, short for, uh, and it's a bit of a backronym, uh, but it's the present leader of independent dictatorship. Because we are an independent dictatorship, and I am okay. the present leader. Yeah. And uh -huh. but yeah. initially, it came from the name Plater and Thargoid being combined, and it became Ploid. And the joke, the joke was, is that I was actually secretly a Thargoid. I don't even know how that started or who came up with it, but <laughs> it happened. Oh, the Ploid. That, I'm, I've yeah. seen that phrase a few times. And I was thinking, 
Yay. Ah, so I know that. um, Yeah, you see it all over the place. It's the hail hail deployed. Um, All the hail deployed. Awesome. (laughs) <laughs> it's a good it's a good one but yeah so uh, we've got cool. some lore and that's that's the running joke behind it um but the, the real the real lore behind um commander placer as the ployed is that he did it he did it as a bit of a dare it was a joke he right. he, he never he never thought it would happen he basically sat there and went no detectives are easy anyone can start one <laughs> just do it as a religious cult and it became exactly. as a well go on then go do it well maybe i will and now he's kind of stuck there like a little bit to the point where he believes his own hype, but at the same time, he's right. kind of kept prisoner by the people that worship him. He's a bit stuck there. That's yeah. the, the kind of idea. <laughs> I like it. That's really cool. Uh, now... <laughs> it's nice actually. You can leave a little bit, of, leave a bit of your lore in the game, which is, yeah. which is cool. Yeah, it's good. It's a cool. Little, little system. Now I'm I'm in Naguri, where okay, soon till so... relics are purchasable. So that's where I assume Excellent. I would need to be. So maybe just grab. Grab one of those. Okay. Off to Cheronovsky. Um, but yeah, the, the whole idea of the ployed thing, it, it's great, because when I was doing the, the voice recording, <laughs> uh, I'm in the sound booth at Frontier, and I'm doing the recordings, yep. and um, I don't... I, been on chemotherapy for two weeks at this point. Right. So it's feeling yeah, yeah. really, really rough. And I couldn't touch anyone. Um so everyone's coming up to me going to shake my hand and introduce themselves. I'm like, oh I can't do that. Oh no. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. sorry, I can't do that. And then meeting David and he and he walked in and he he'd already been told that I wasn't shaking people's hands. So it was no awkward yep. moment. But for me it was something uh, awkward because normally yeah. you shake people's hands when you meet them, don't you? So Well sure, yeah. Right. It's just but yeah, brilliant doing the recording and all that kind of stuff and really getting into it as time went on. Got yeah. to throw myself into it and we adjusted the lines and sort of oh, getting a little cool. bit messy like, you know, my word is law. Or <laughs> please make sure you uh, <laughs> request landing before docking in my station. And stuff like that. So it's all very, very personal. I'm going to have to go visit that now. Yeah, it's it's up in Hiller, which isn't which is only a, a few light years away from Lave, really. So when you kind of right. we've been around those places, we're just outside of that corner of the the bubble, I guess. Okay, cool. Yep, so right on the edge of the old wall. Yep. Mm. Now it's a nice touch. I mean, I've met um I've met David Braben times myself, and he's he's you know he's a proper proper gent. He's quite shy yeah. actually. Um, he's he's not a natural with. Um, you know, crowds and people, but he, he genuinely is interested and a uh, hugely intelligent chap. Mm. Really, you know, you know, <laughs> I, li- I like to think of myself as quite smart. You know, you know not trying to blow me in trouble too much, but um, there's there's only a few people I've met in my life where, where I've really had the notion actually this guy is much, much cleverer than me. Yeah. <laughs> and he was one of those guys who kind of like, yeah, I'm not operating yeah. on quite the same <laughs> same level here. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, oh, okay. Um, well, I so, could say yeah, the same re- thing. A really, a really genuinely nice bloke. Really genuinely nice. Bloke. Which, which, yeah, you'd hope he was, yeah. was wouldn't you? But uh, yeah, and he is. So. Everyone, everyone I've met at Frontier has been lovely. Like all, really, really nice people. Like, yeah, no doubt, you know, yeah, they like, are. They are brilliant. Yeah, it's people that people that do actually. They they care, they care about what they're doing. Uh, I know people can get a ribbon, give them a bit of a hard time about um, the game. And, and you know updates when they come out and things are a little bit rough. But you've yeah, got to remember and stuff that goes wrong, doesn't it? No one plays the game like the player base does. No one. No. Like we we find. Yeah, yeah. We, we we do. We find everything super quick. Um, people work out stuff by looking at the stars in the game. Hello there. And it's mad. That Absolutely was that, mad. that sort of stuff was insane, wasn't it? When Canon was like looking, um, you know, the trailers for for new content and mm. <laughs> working out where stuff was. Based on the star position, like, that's a serious. Commitment, yeah, was that one that worked out where the Thargoid bases would be, and loads that's of us, yep. flocks of us, all went there. That's Excuse right. Me. Everyone um, piles yeah. in after that. That's right. And I, I mean, I, I was in there. Uh, Mars from Ghost Giraffe was in there as well, and we were both online when the update dropped. And I was like, "Did you get moved as well?" And he's like, "Yeah," and they, they basically Ooh. turfed everybody that's, that's out of the do, system, which. <laughs> But it's weird. Like weird. one day we'll get into that system, and I'll be like, "Yes, finally we're in here," and it'll be a, it'll be this weird feeling of achievement. I think. Yeah, no, that'd be really cool. I must admit, I went for um, a big tour of the um, Orion Nebula area and the Horsehead Nebula before it was all 
um, that was all cordoned off as well mm. by the permit. And I had a lovely, I've got some wonderful screenshots of, of touring around the area um, early on in the game, which I can't go back and do again because right, you can't yeah. get into that part of the space anymore, which is really annoying. Because it's quite, a, it's beautiful area in terms of the graphics. Um, but you can't see it at the moment, which is a bit, a bit frustrating. I don't know how, when they're, when they're going to unlock those um, areas either. Um, I'm guessing they've got kind of cool stuff planned for 2020 and so on and so forth. Yeah, but, hopefully. Uh, we'll oh, see. Yeah, uh, we're over 5,000. We're over 5,000. I'm sorry to I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I hate doing that. Um, but, we, but we're <laughs> no, over. Uh, now, right, filters are active. Uh, records. Awesome. So well done. Yeah, um, congratulations on that. That's, that's two and a half times over target now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, I've got no cargo space on this. Shit. Oh Oops. no! Um, no, it's fine. Uh, there is outfitting. I can easily bung. Oh, you got outfitting. You just need to get yeah, a sp yeah, cargo I've, spot. Yeah, we'll just bung some cargo racks on there. Otherwise, it's a bit of an oops moment. But yeah, five thousand pounds, which is awesome. Um, yeah, congratulations! Right. Right. And thank you, thank you, everybody who's donating. I will give you a donation in a bit as well. So that's that's awesome. Uh, uh, it's, it's been. Um, it's been I've also got. Um, obviously, for you, um, I would like to give you a. Um, if you, if you haven't really got them, of course, uh, a uh, a copy of um, either one of my elite books. So let me know which one you'd like. Oh, um, and you. um, we would be also um, I can um, uh, quite happy to give you one to kind of auction on the stream at some point. So yeah. uh, if you want to do that as well, with your, I think you were doing hashtag Clive or something, weren't you? Is that, yeah, is that how it's done? Do, oh, don't say it. They'll do it again. Um, no, uh, no, no, no. We, we don't. Know, I don't know what they'll do with that because um, I, that was an absolute nightmare to do. But there is only one <laughs> book to give away. <laughs> So there is that okay. we have to think yeah. about. Um, so what yeah, I'm so going to do is, with that one, um, I'm going to do things slightly differently, I think. All right. Um, because I just need to make sure that... Because I've got a special email address just for competitions um, that I haven't used for a while. Oh, okay. Or for, um, since well, since well I mean, basically, um, uh, there's... Um, I'll, I'll, get a co I'll, I'll get two books. One, one I'll get directly sent to you. Yeah. Um, just so you've got a kind of sort of memory of what we did this evening, and um, the other one you can um, you know auction away on on the stream, and I'll, I'll whoever wins it, I'll uh, I'll organise getting it to them, and I'll sign it obviously for them. Um. Oh, here we go. Right, because the um, auctions are very very complicated to do, but what we can. <laughs> Is we can, we, whichever is easiest. We can thing. do a draw giveaway, which is totally doable. Um, yeah, that, that, that's perfect. Well, um, whatever's best for me. Yeah, that's gonna be something that we can do. Um, pretty easy, I think we can do that. Yeah, that's something that I can, I can arrange. Um, so yeah, awesome. Right, that'd be cool. So I've bought a Suntil relic. Excellent. Right, so. Um, Hopefully, therefore, Alessia is paying attention. Um, and you're doing pretty well on the time, I would guess. Um, um, excellent, your final destination. Oh, this is good timing. So that's worked quite well. Okay. Um, a battle over a moon, a tragic page. Federation and Empire conflict engaged. Light broken into its component parts. Your final destination is where a story starts now. I know where we're going. <laughs> I know where we're going as well. Yeah, well, I should hope so. Yeah, we <laughs> are going. We're, we're going to prism, and there's actually someone already there. Oh, look at that. <laughs> how how interesting. Ah, uh, now it might be a good time then to see if you can bring um, Alessia into a wing, if that's. Possible. Oh, 
Oh. Weird stuff is afoot. Okay, well, I've invited her to a wing, so we'll have to see if that works. Have you got a connection? Um, I, oh, I can see that she has joined the wing, because hey, I'm in a in super Excellent. Role, okay. the That's hyperspace tunnel. So you need to find your way to the prism system. Ah, come on, Giz is just uh, reading my shape with sheer trilogy book. I haven't finished it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm working on that. <laughs> um, but I'm glad you're enjoying it. That's great. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, yeah, it's not just uh, not just a leap. It's um... right. Been... I'm 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 a lucky in a position to be able to do right. I'm a lot more now than I used to be able to because various things have happened. In in life, but partly getting old, <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, not having to work quite so much. But um, it's uh, so I'm, 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 you know, I've been telling stories ever since I was a kid, actually. Um, and oddly enough, it was a leap that kind of got me started. Um, and uh, seeing that, you know, Robert Holdstock had written that Dark Wheel, that suddenly I realised it was okay to write science fiction stories because other people were doing it. Mm. And that was at the age of 13. And I've never really stopped writing ever since. I haven't taken it seriously until I was much older, but it was always with me all through my my life so um it's um it's nice that elite is still part of my life now <laughs> yeah um, it's great when you find something that you kind of you take with you through different stages of your life and, and whether it be um a, a certain franchise or if it could be a hobby or an activity it could yeah. be anything that you like doing but you take it with you and it grows with you as well yeah it's that, that's exactly it. i mean it's um i remember doodling yeah, as a kid, as a sort of teenager, young teenager, doodling Cobra Three models on my maths textbooks, and, things <laughs> <like that. laughs> um, and um, it was, uh, it's, you know, it was just it's just been part of my psyche for so long. I can't look at the Cobra spinning around in its wireframe without kind of getting a little thrill of excitement whenever I see it, <laughs> which is a bit weird, but um, it's it's just burnt into my brain at such a fundamental level. It's just always going to be part of my life, even, you know, right, right, I'm sure to the end. I will be dreaming of cobras as I pass away <laughs> into the ether, or whatever happens. Yeah. So it's, it, it is nice, because, and also, obviously, what we hadn't realized so much before Elite Dangerous came out was how many people, um, you know, Elite was important to. It was mm. only when the Kickstarter and Elite Dangerous, the community stuff, stuff started happening that everyone realized how many other people got elite and were excited about it. And we all got to meet each other and chat and stuff. And it's been it's been brilliant really the last seven years. Well, because I, it's just been a kind of non stop elite fest. Yeah. I I played <laughs> I played like um X Wing and TIE Fighter and stuff like that and I was desperate for a proper flight sim uh, like that that oh, would bring back game. those memories. Yeah. And then I, I saw Elite Dangerous and at the time my computer couldn't run it. But I sat there yep. pretty much drooling over the um uh, over the gameplay and uh, again over over the trailers, and I was like, I need this in my life, and now yeah, here I am. It was, oh. yeah, I know it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely to be playing it. I mean, I was, and I say, you know, I've I've been I've been hugely fortunate to be able to play a part in creating some of the content for the game that I love as a teenager. I mean, if you'd said to my teenage self, um, you'll get the opportunity when you're an adult to actually make things in the computer game. <laughs> It'll be multiplayer, and it, yeah, everybody in the entire world be able to play it simultaneously I would just faint it <laughs> you couldn't have explained that to me as a teenager how cool that would have been um, and yet that's what's happened and it's 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 a yeah, huge privilege to have been able to do that now I've arrived in prison now it is a I know it is a bit of a haul to um, the way we need to go so you'll have to oh, ramp your frame shift drive up to maximum yep. make sure you switch off the automatic <laughs> um, limiters or whatever it is. Oh, none of that. I'm just, just bam, <laughs> go forward. So where where are we off to? Because I know we have the battle right, so of what, she what was, the, what was the what was the clue? Yeah, it was a battle over a moon. Was it's, um, Keone is how you pronounce Ke it. Keone, are they? Okay. Um, and it is a habitable moon um, in the system, uh, which is where 
um, well, well, a, a battle between the Federation and the Empire fought uh, in in the book, uh, in my first book, Reclamation. So uh, um, that kind of brings you to the start of the next book. Now that that's interesting. So um, this is this is where my two books start. So if you, I don't have you have you read either of them? Uh, no, I or, haven't. Or no. Okay, so I mean, what's probably going to be good if I send you the first book, yep. then where this stream finishes off is is where the book starts. So that will be quite a nice little lore so continuer cool. for you. That is super cool that I've <laughs> kind of had an introduction with the man that's written the book. Like that's that's super cool. <laughs> well, right. it's uh, it was a uh, yeah. You know, I've bounced around a few ideas of a few. You know a few other folks and stuff on online, so um, we thought that might be for you. Mm, yeah, brilliant! That's awesome. I guess when I get there, <laughs> I'll see the finish. Finishing yes, bits yes, and... I must admit it's uh, it's a bit of a haul in, I'm afraid. It'll take a, it'll take about five minutes or so for you to get there. Ah, that's fine. Go nice and it's fast. Not, we can chat away about. Um, yeah, I, I just need to respond to my mum in chat. Yeah, we've hit five thousand right. pounds, yeah, mum. Awesome, <laughs> we've done it. <laughs> Uh, which is brilliant <laughs> which is again absolutely amazing um, that's like over, like two years previous to, to the last the two previous streams I've done for the British Thyroid Foundation um, where it's kind of £12,000 in total so this brings our grand total oh, wow. up to 17000 already um, that is amazing uh, yeah. yeah it's absolutely it's brilliant it's incredible yeah that's well, that I mean the generosity I must admit the generosity of the elite community Time and time uh, amazes me. Um, I mean, I don't know if you saw the stuff that um, Frontier did for um, Matt um, Matt Westhorpe's yeah. um, nephew um, Michael when he sadly passed away earlier this year. Uh, I mean, Zach Antonacci. I mean, <laughs> Frontier basically. I mean, and, and mostly Zach and and, and, his, and and Sally and Paige, the guys there. Who I know Paige has been on this evening. Um, you know those those guys just moved heaven and earth to make stuff happen, and corralled, you know, corralled a whole bunch of willing volunteers in, you know, myself included, to just get something done in such mm. a, an amazing short space of time. Um, and you know, it was a it was a, a real privilege to be, able to, you know, in a, you know, a heartbreaking but bittersweet story yeah. um, to, to be to, to take part of. And you know, I can't think of any other companies that I know um, that would just you know back break thing oh, over a weekend this is not in office hours this is this is weekends right yeah um when everybody's got lives and other stuff to be getting on with and um you know just just made stuff happen and um got everybody together and you know just pulled things together to make make this story and you know the 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 heartwarming sad tragic glorious thing about that whole thing was um that um you know michael got to hear that story and hours later literally hours later he'd passed on and um you know if we if we'd made one one um one foot wrong or there'd been a, a 24-hour delay in anything we'd have missed yeah. the, the the achievement we did there so um you know hats off to the crew really they were they were absolutely fabulous it was um really absolutely in absolutely incredible because I mean I, I watched it all play out like literally I was invited into the Discord that where that had been set up and stuff. Um, you know Zach invited yeah. me into it. I've joined it. I've said hello, and then you know things happened so quickly and it was like I, I said the thing is that I feel like a bit of a scumbag because I said to my wife like the um the the, de the day that I was invited in, um I just kind of said, you know I've been invited into this but I don't really know what I can offer or what I can yeah. do. I I didn't like. Um, you know, knowing that that Michael had not a lot of time, and because my personal situation as well, I was like, I yeah, don't, I, of course, I don't yeah. know what I can offer or what I can do, but the you know, saying hello and being there um, was was kind of it was nice that I could do that at least. But I, you know, it must have been really really tough for his family. So, um, oh, I cried when I found out. So, that's, yeah, I must admit, I, I mean, it was I, I, I mean, like, we. In, in, the, in the rush of doing stuff for um, it was just frantic and I had to write a story and I had to do it, and do it in the time scale which I've just never tried before <laughs> I didn't, didn't even know it was possible I said well I'll give it a go and yeah we did it but the day I heard that he'd got it I was like yes great fantastic and then Zach texts me um, literally that, that evening 
um, just to report the fact that um, Michael had passed on. And at that point, I just I just crashed. It was like an emotion. I'd just fallen off an emotional wall. And um, um, I just, I remember going upstairs. My wife said, are you right? And I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> Which is very unusual for me because I'm a, I'm a bit of a kind of, you know, I, I generally am not that demonstrative as a person, <laughs> as my wife will always tell her. Um, and um, I just I just broke down. I just said, you know, because it was, it was so full on. And then suddenly it was, you know, he, he, he was gone. Um, yeah. And the finality of that really hit the point. And I just, you know, just I, I did just break down, just, just cried my heart out for about you know, half an hour to. It's just a response. It wasn't. It wasn't even felt like I was in control of it. It was just a reaction to the news, um, and um, it, just just an amazing bittersweet experience. It was. Uh, you know that such good stuff came out of it was was great. Yeah. Obviously horrible that it had to take place like that. But, so, um, but heartening that so many people wanted to do a thing, and um, you know do a thing like that. So yeah. kudos to kudos yeah, to everybody. Stuff. And, and that's uh, and that's again that's the thing that we talk about when we talk about frontier and how they care. I think that comes into it, and um, it's just. It, it's, it's an example of that uh, and the community team do nail it and it's great they that, do. it's yeah. great that they're very approachable for all of us and we can go to them we can talk to them and you know we, I just think people doing things behind my behind my back for example Greatest arranged this is Commander Greatest he arranged um, for me to go to Frontier uh, and do all the voice recording and stuff oh, like that he? and I had oh, no awesome. idea I didn't oh, know that's awesome um, yeah yeah it was just supposed to be like the content creators preview thing, and then um, yeah. I rocked up, and um, it was like surprise, this is happening. It's like yeah, Greatest had arranged it and stuff because I knew that he'd arranged for me to go, um, but I didn't realise yeah, that's yeah. what would happen. It's just like oh, it's it's, it's the community again, um, doing its thing, absolutely, absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I think that's that's something that we well, we wouldn't be doing this if that wasn't the case. Yeah, we wouldn't be here doing this stream. But it's you know, and it's nice, like say, all the people who are, um, you know, watching us now and listening in, commenting and stuff. It's all yeah, it, it's all part of the community. It's it's um, it's just nice that people will join in and enjoy and you know, take part. And it's it's lovely. I think computer game, you know, so often derided in the media, is able to do that sort of thing. yeah. It's you know, that, that's that's just really positive and positive. And there's so much. You know, there's so much crap about nowadays, isn't there? You know, people arguing about Brexit and people arguing about climate change and people arguing about whatever. It's nice to have some positive stuff to come back to and just go, no, actually, humans just can be decent, right? Yeah. And, and do things for each other. <laughs> if we more of us did that, then, you know, maybe the world would be a better place. Definitely. I think we can all agree on that one. It's a shame this place is so far away, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, mel it's a little bit far away. How, how, how far are you? It's that, um, well, it says two minutes-ish. I've got 82,000 light seconds left to go. But I'll get there. It'll be fine. Um, oh, I'm enabling my wing beacon, Commander. Please join me. Okay. I'll keep an eye out for the, for the old... I thought i say bacon. Quite destroying the roleplay section. Ah, oh, the wing bacon. Oh, keep an eye out. The wing bacon. The wing bacon. <laughs> is that, is that, I've heard that one before. You haven't. Oh, oh no, I've heard that one. Oh, no, I see. I don't. I must have. I don't play as much as I should. Yeah. Um, Just because. I mean, because you know, wing bacon, bacon. It's, it's what happens. It's the way it goes. <laughs> I feel like. Um, Oh, oh no, that moment I click on something and I shouldn't have done. Oh, there we go. Technical stuff, don't worry about it, everyone's fine. It's okay. Oh, Commander Terra Firma is uh, asking me, did did you ask to have these stations so far from the drop-in point? <laughs> oddly, oddly enough, I did. Because I had this notion when I designed this um, solar system that I thought I want to make it a bit awkward for people to um, take control of it through power play and things like that. Um, 
so that you have to be pretty dedicated to get in and get out and do things to it. So I thought if I make it quite a long haul, that's going to discourage the people who really don't want to <laughs> spend the time mucking about with my system, um, uh, which unfortunately didn't work because it got taken over almost straight away um, in PowerPlay. But um, I don't think it's changed much since. But uh, <laughs> that, that was sort of my thinking around it at the time. Yeah. Uh, some things that, that can be done. I t the power play and uh, background simulation side of things is absolutely mad. We we do a lot of um, a lot of stuff of that in our player group. Um, I've got I've got a few really very dedicated people who do all the math, and I'm like, oh. rather than me. Yeah, I must admit, I've never I don't think I've ever done power play. Uh, I just don't have the. I'm a, I'm a bit of a. I suppose the the, the fallen. <laughs> I don't have the time. <laughs> I'm too busy. Usually too busy writing, fair, yeah. doing something creative. But um, I try and spend a couple of hours a week playing, playing elite. But um, it's just, it's literally is just time. I'm always chasing off doing things, and, and yeah, the sort of stuff that I do now is, uh, um, you know, is it's sporadic. Doesn't make make it easy to sit down in front of a computer. And if I do sit down in front of a computer, and then. By the time I get to the point where I want to have some time off, I don't, don't want to be in front of a computer <laughs> doing it. <laughs> so, um, so uh, there we are. So that's kind of good. But um, so yeah. I'm, I'm assuming you'll be heading for a POI. Um, have you got? Have you got? Um, have you I've, got her wing beacon yet? Yeah, I've I've I've, I've um, nav locked to it, so it should. Okay. Should, should drop, drop me in. Out. Yeah, that's the thoughts there. Because I can't really see anything at this range. Plus, it means that I can't overshoot. Because it'll take care of it for me. It'll, which take, is it'll take care of it for you, <laughs> yeah. which is great. Yeah. So I actually designed the um, the prism system as a as an interesting kind of um, astronomical exercise. I had the opportunity. Michael, way back in the day, said, you know, when you want to design your system, let me know and we can go through it. That's cool. So I'd come up, I came up with this sort of system design and said, this is what I'd like it to be. And he went, yeah, that looks cool. Let's do that. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> so, and I worked out all the orbits myself in advance. So I didn't know what sort of detail he wanted. Um, and I, I mentioned this to him on an email. I said, oh, I've worked out some orbital dynamics. And um, oh, he said, oh, let me have those. And I, so I sent him this huge, great big Excel spreadsheet. And um, and um, what was cool is the first, I, I hadn't, didn't know much, you know, what he'd done with it ever since. But when I went into the game the first time to visit the Prism system, um, I was amazed to see that Michael Brooks had implemented the Prism system exactly mm. the way that I had designed it in my Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, you know, with all the angles and everything. If you look at it in the oral review, you can see exactly, you know, what it looks like. And it's like yeah. he, he did it. He, there was a lot of attention to detail on that, which was which was really cool. So you did uh, choose for it to be this far away. I did, yeah. <laughs> Sorry oh, about that. I'm not sure that's forgivable <laughs> at this point. <laughs> oh, I'm dropping in. You should be almost okay, there. Okay, yeah, I've dropped in. And this Excellent. is our mysterious character who has been guiding us. We've been tested with flyover. Have you, have you got her ship? Ooh, okay. Don't. I better not bump into her. Probably it's probably not a good idea, is it? No, not considering. What ship is she? What ship is she in at the moment? Uh, crate Mark Two. Ah, cool. Okay, he just flashed lights at me. I, I'm a bit like, okay. Ooh. Um, congratulations, Commander. I am gratified to see you are worthy. Um, I will take this result to those who have influence. Mmm.
The Dark Wheel has been watching with interest. Keep learning, more answers are to be found in the law. For now, farewell. May we speak again if they permit it. Ooh. <laughs> like, Ooh. I think I think I think therefore you are you are being considered for or at least put forward for uh, you know, an application to the dark wheel. Oh, that's exciting. That'd be cool. So. Wow, there you go. Quite an honour, come on. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. Many, many... <laughs> uh, many, many, many try, but few are chosen, I think. Mm. Probably the way to, uh, to answer that one. Yeah. Well, let's probably leave the wing, I guess. That would be... Yes, sir. Uh, unless here is probably off somewhere. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's my problem there. Oh, no. What's happened here? <gasps> My ship is frozen. Oh, you busted your ship. I wish you'd done something to it. <laughs> no, I must have done. Like I can't, I can't navigate. I can't, can't follow. Something's, something's happened. I've been, and now she's gone. That's weird. And now she disconnected. She <gasps> I'll never, I'll never. Know. You know what? I will never know. Did I get a number? Nope. Didn't even buy me a drink. Um, <laughs> what can you do? Um, there you go. But potential member of the Dark Wheel. There you go. Fantastic stuff. Wowzers. So yeah, that's. Uh, I don't know too many people who have been offered that one. Uh, congratulations. Oh. That's, oh, uh, thank you. That's a thing. It's very. <laughs> uh, that's because that's because I you know I, I worked out Merlin and um, it is it's, <laughs> on that. It was the Lave one that you got. The yeah. Lave one and yeah. Soontil, soon till well, the soon till relics soon till. was on that. Yeah. All over it, but yeah. Um, well, thank you very much, Drew. Um, what I'm going to do oh, is no, I will. Um, I'll get the giveaway going um, in a moment or two. Um, yep. Um, uh, before I get my next guest on, and um, where can people find you on the internet? Where can people find you if they want to? Um, you can find me really easily on Twitter or book, or I've got a website at um, drewwager.com. Obviously, the drewwager.com. Um, easy place to find me. So, um, and all the books, anything is available on Amazon as well. So, if you want to find it, stuff, easy. Um, stuff. So, and yeah, you stream, you stream as well, don't you? I do. Yeah, I'm a bit intermittent. In life, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but generally, yeah, it's Mondays fair. and Thursdays um, in, the, in the early evenings. So, uh, yeah, catch me on one of those. Uh, be more than welcome. For, awesome stuff. Um, for, for a bit of stream, yeah, I do a little bit of leech generally on Thursdays, most common, and we just chat about that. So, I'm planning on doing a bit of a law tour. So, um, not quite like what we've done here, but a bit of an explanation of um, what's going on, you know, in the Empire, in the Federation, a bit of background, so, so all that. So, kind of, I suppose a little bit like some stuff, maybe, but maybe choose a couple of places an evening, tour around and. So if you fancy that, then obviously join me on my... Uh, we'd love to have you along. <laughs> Brilliant. Awesome stuff. Well, thank you again. Um, I'll let you go. My so you pleasure, can... sir. And um, uh, you have a fantastic evening. Do look after um, So So um, hope everybody in the chat enjoyed that as well. It's been great fun to be on here. Well, massive wishes for your uh, uh, the 24 hours. Um, hope it goes well. I will uh, I'll drop you a donation um, at the moment here. So keep you going. Brilliant so, stuff. Brilliant stuff, Commander, and enjoy yourself. Good All right, pleasure. thank you. Take care.